Wars client for Mac that he created a long time ago. I looked back on it and I figured out that this video is kind of getting a little dated, especially because I now have a new account and um, a lot of stuff has been happening with the Guild Wars client. Anyways, um, first of all, I need to say that some people have been having problems. Um, this is probably just like general information, but um, you got to make sure that um, your Mac can run the game first. Um, so basically, um, the operating system, that doesn't matter. Don't think about that. The main thing that you need to work about or worry about is that you have at least 2 gigahertz single core, which um, 2 gigahertz single core, uh, at least 1 gigabyte of RAM, um, 4 gigabytes, you should have that. And then uh, just look at this. You need to have an NVIDIA GeForce FX 570 series or above. I'll kind of get into that. It's kind of hard to tell. If your graphics card's above that, but um, to be completely honest, as long as you have a Mac book that's from since basically when they started the new MacBook line with um, the in Intel processors above, it should work. Your um, computer should be fine, um, and everything else you can use. So. I just want to show you how you can um, check what your um, system specifications are. Um, right now, I have a 2011 or late 2010, um, the last MacBook that they made. So for me, you click on the Apple button about this Mac, and then you click on More Info. Um, for me, this is, looks really nice because um, I have Lion installed. It might not look this nice, but um, um, if it you don't have line it'll probably look more like this this will still be able to give you plenty of information on what you have so let's just get into that I'm gonna show you the nice little beautiful display here so um, I have a 2.4 gigahertz dual core processor which is more than enough 4 gigabytes of RAM which is more than enough a NVIDIA GeForce 320M 256 megabyte space and all you needed is 64 megabyte of space um, so I should be fine and the rest is not very important so you just need to check that if your computer can actually run the game um, to be completely honest um, every single Intel based Mac should be able to run it but um, not at maximum speci er, specifications um so yeah so just make sure that you can do that first um now i'm gonna show you how the app works so i already have mine downloaded and on my dock and it's the same exact one that i'm giving you except that the difference is that this one is a fully imaged app so um let's show in finder um, instead of mine being like what it's like 75 megabytes or whatever um, I made mine is fully imaged so it's 4.34 gigabytes which is pretty big but um that's because I completely imaged it and um, I let it download every single part of the game but anyways um so to get into the Guild Wars um, application like the Windows operating system section of it, I guess, like the files within the app that run Guild Wars and everything. Uh, you want to right click the app and go to show package contents. And here we are. Um, these are not important. Uh, this one is, but I'll get into that later. Um, drive C. And then you want to get into program files. And then you want to get into Guild Wars. And here is all of my files. So I've got the gw.exe, the gw.dat, and the gw.temp. So the rest of it is just mods I've put into the game. These are, you probably won't see these unless you saw them yourself. And um, you'll also see the templates. And if you take any screenshots, you'll see a screens folder as well. Um, 
that's where your screenshots will be held and if you make templates this is where all your uh, templates are going to be held so to get into what these three files are um, the Guild Wars executable is what you click on on the Windows PC and what I direct it to on the Mac to activate Guild Wars to execute Guild Wars um, this is what starts the launcher and is what you know as the Guild Wars file um, the Guild Wars dat is probably one of the most um, the most important files on here this stores all the data of Guild Wars into it this is why it's 4.4 gigabytes of space on your hard drive because pretty much everything on the um, Guild Wars like everything in Guild Wars is saved into the Guild Wars dot dat and encrypted in it um, so like when you have a launcher and the first time you load you know how it's really really slow like it takes like 30 minutes to an hour to load it but then after that it's really quick loading um, that's because the first load you're building your Guild Wars dot dat and then once it's loaded, once your Guild Wars dot dat is um, fully uh, loaded, um, the places that you've already loaded will run really quick because it's already in the Guild Wars dot dat. Now, what the Guild Wars dot temp is, which is the Guild Wars temporary file, they use this so that when you're in the launcher and you have an update, they use the temporary file to load that into. Um, they use this as kind of a gateway to from the Guild Wars EXE to the Guild Wars DAT to um, push data through an update. So um, you can delete this. This isn't important. Like I'll delete it right now. But no, once you have another update, that will reappear. But um, just ignore it. It's not that big of a deal. So um, the main problems that you'll have within the Guild Wars or like... Um, it cannot find guildwars.dat or guildwars.dat is corrupted or something. It is problems with the guildwars.dat here. So um, the main things that you can do is you can either completely delete it. Just like go delete. I'm not going to delete it because this took forever to uh, make. So I'm not going to touch that. Or you can either um, try going back go here into the white and skin folder right here this is kind of the control center of the app so you click on that uh, go to advanced none of this is really help, uh, needed unless you need to install Windows software from an uh, executable like an installer or don't even worry about that I wouldn't even touch screen options so going into advanced oh snap I will block that out anyways so um as you can see, this is where it is targeted, which is the guildwars.exe. And um, this is the Guild Wars menu bar name. Um, this is a version. I can put that to 1.2 because I've. this is the one that I personally use. Um, sync, what else? Okay, so um, you see this exe flags um, part of the... Um, uh, I keep losing what I'm thinking of. Um, EXE flags part of the configuration wineskin advanced window. Um, this is where you put um, command line commands. Um, if you know who Doombox is, he has a pretty good video on how um, command line commands do. I'll probably link that in the description below or in an annotation above. Um, so let me just go through some of them like um like dot password if you um do a dot password then blank and then your pass your password right there um it will automatically put in the password field and if you already have your um email and your character name um already logged in it'll automatically log you in once you click into guild wars which is really nice and um it can help with uh, key logging, I guess. Um, yeah, um, it can be helpful if you have a key logger on your system or something like that. Um, so all around, it's pretty good unless you have like a friend that uses the same computer and you can go steal your account information. 
but um, to get out of that kind of area you can also do dot email and then put in your email address for the username and then you can put character and then put your character name in quotes like for me it would be chaos theory like that and you can automatically put in your character name so if you put all those three um, in there together you don't even need to save your um, account information um, you can just have that um, um, put it in and if you run it through that exe flag it will automatically log you in if you don't there will be no account information on there which is pretty nice I use it for steam so um, the one I need to talk to you about right now is dot image that what image dot image or dash image does is that um, it looks into the Guild Wars dat, um, finds any errors in it, um, change, uh, corrects the errors, and basically loads every single thing into Guild Wars, which can make for a very big Guild Wars dat file, and also it takes a very long time, like it can take hours to download the entire Guild Wars dat, but once you do. Um, you shouldn't have any problems with the guildwars.dat, like, I'm not gonna, don't quote me on that, like, I'm not 100% sure, but your problem should be going away if you do that. Plus, um, loading times within the game will be instant everywhere. You don't have to have that first, like, that annoying first long load in anywhere. It'll be already in your guildwars.dat, and you will have a streamless, uh, um, gaming experience so if I have a long-term um, uh, place where I want to play the game like my desktop and my laptop um, I use a dash image to make things easier for me so use that as kind of a debug type thing um, especially if you have the Guild Wars dat problem going on um, let's think other things that I can talk about um, let's think. Oh, let's get into tools, I guess. So this is the configuration wine tools kind of area. Um, you don't really need to touch into this. If you know what the registry editor in Windows is, that's how you access it within the app. Um, task manager within the app. If you need to um check all the tasks that are running. Um, if Guild Wars somehow like freaks out on you. The task manager, you might want to check that and stop Guild Wars through here or whatever, um, just depending on what's happening. Um, you can also uninstall stuff from here. Um, you don't really need to use that. Um, also, you can use Wine Tricks. What Wine Tricks is, is it allows you to download a, um, a lot of fixes for your um, app such as downloading the Direct3D, DirectX9, um, full DLLs, um, Gecko, uh, Internet Explorer, just a lot of stuff that you can use. So um, if you think that you can, you need some programs, look through Wine Tricks and look through the descriptions and see if it's there because if it is, it'll make your life so much easier that you don't have to download it and then like install it into the app and everything. You just click on... Um, one that you want to run, click run, and then it'll do it all for you. And once it's done, it's done. It's installed on your app, and it's just, it's a lot easier. Anyways, you don't really need to touch Wine Tricks unless you want to toy around with everything. Some things in Wine Tricks, such as a uh, .NET uh, 3.5, does not work. But you, you're welcome to try it. I, it won't break your app if you try to download it. But um. It doesn't work, at least to my knowledge, it does not work. Anyway, so you get out of Wine Tricks. You can also summon a command line shell, a command prompt, if you want to do stuff like that. Like, um, what can you do? The only thing I can think of is IP config. Just like, sweet. Okay. I don't know if I put put anything super secret in there. But, anyways, um, another one is the custom exe creator. If you look back and you see these, whoa, 
wrong view right there. It's that one. Okay, so um, what these are are um, executables that I can use within the app so that when I click on the app, it'll load Guild Wars. But if I click on one of these within the app, like take, for example, Pond, I click on that, and it'll alone, uh, load up the Pond uh, Squared Build Editor, um, which is a very nice build editor. It's on Guild Wars Guru, and it's really nice. I recommend it. Um, it might take a while to load, but um, let's see, did I click on that? Hmm, that's interesting. Probably because I have this running. Anyways, if you want to create a custom executable, click on that. Um, say what the name of it is right here, and then put um the the path of the executable from drive C and just go into it and just find out. You know what you need to do. And then you can also put executable flags within that. So if you want to make it so you can have dash image in there. I don't know. Just, yeah. That's just good to know. Okay, so that's pretty much everything that you need to know about that. Refresh wrapper. You click on this. It reboots the wrapper. Like, it would be equivalent to a native PC, PC reboot. Oh, I can't speak today. Um, a reboot of the system which is really nice um, that is another way to check if um, if you refresh the wrapper it might um, help out any troubles that you're having so use also use that as a debug type feature uh, it that I've actually heard people within the forum say that this helps a lot so check that out um, do not touch rebuild wrapper that basically formats the wrapper and makes it so that everything within the wrapper is deleted and the wrapper is void so don't touch that update wrapper um, I check this normally um, if it says no update needed don't update um, then change engine used I wouldn't change the engine it shouldn't make too much of a difference like you can use whatever engine you want but um, this is a crossover games engine which um, Seems to be the best engine out there for now, um, but that might change after a while. Anyways, so that's really all that there is. Um, once you get to Wineskin 2.5, also I want to say that um, make sure that Emulate 3 button mouse is unchecked. This will allow you to um, alt click and control click when you want to um, highlight all of the um all of your allies or all of your foes in the area all the npcs in the area um you know what um alt and control does and then you want to click to like select somebody um before that wouldn't work out because of this and if you uncheck that it'll work perfectly so just keep that in mind when you use this anyways other than that i think that's all we need to talk about so if you have any questions or anything, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. And as usual, I hope you like this and have a nice day.